안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. Today we're going to talk about the JavaScript trends for the year 2020. We're going to be doing this by looking at the state of JS survey results. It's a survey done for JavaScript developers that allows us to look into how the ecosystem is feeling. What are the developers using? What is the most used front-end framework? Is it React or is it Vue? Or what is the most used back-end framework? What is the most used data layer? Is it Redux or GraphQL? All these answers are coming up on this video. So we're going to look at five different categories, JS flavors, front-end frameworks, data layer, back-end frameworks, and mobiles and desktop. But before we can get started, we need to understand how to read the charts. So the red, the dark red part of the chart means people that have used this tool or framework or library or whatever and want to keep using it. The light red means people that have used it but don't want to use it again or want to stop using it. The dark green means people that have heard of this and want to use it or want to learn it. The light gray means people that have heard of this but don't have any interest in learning. Also, the green means people that have never heard of this tool, library or framework. Okay, so now that we know, let's look at JS flavors. A JS flavor is a programming language that compiles into JavaScript. And on this category, we have TypeScript, Reason, Elm, ClojureScript and PureScript. And as you can see, TypeScript is the winner with 58%, almost 60% of people know TypeScript, use TypeScript, and want to keep using TypeScript. And very, very few people know or want to learn the rest. And this makes sense. TypeScript has 29 million downloads per month. And this is because TypeScript feels like JavaScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. That means that when you learn TypeScript, you don't have to start from zero. Learning TypeScript means basically extending your JavaScript knowledge. And that's why it's so popular, because we don't have to start from zero. If you learn something like Reason, for example, on Reason, you start from zero because everything looks really, really different. Or if you look at Elm, Elm becomes HTML in JavaScript, but everything looks so, so different that people just don't want to get started because it's really scary. Now, satisfaction-wise, people are very happy with TypeScript Reason and Elm if they use it. Interest, TypeScript is winning there. And awareness, the, the crazy thing is awareness. 100% of people know TypeScript. And I think that's the best thing could be, that everybody knows your product and everybody knows the option. It's an amazing thing because that means that people try it and when they try it, they fall in love with it and they stay there. So that's really cool. Let's look at front-end frameworks now. In front-end frameworks, React is the winner. 71% of people came to the React club and stayed. That's a lot of people. So React is the winner on people that want to stay there, want to keep using it and love it. Vue.js, 34% of people are interested in learning it, which is cool. But I want to take your attention to two main points. First is Angular. Many people have heard of Angular and don't want to learn it. Or many people have used Angular and wouldn't use it again. I'm one of them. And the other one is Svelte or Svelte. I don't know how to say it. Svelte, many people have heard of this and want to learn it, me, one of them, and very few people have used it. But it's very interesting how many people really are interested in learning Svelte. And it makes sense. The reason why I say that is because Svelte is a very interesting concept. Svelte is a disappearing framework. And this means that when you write Svelte code, Yes, you write Svelte code. When you compile it, it becomes normal JavaScript. It becomes vanilla JavaScript. So when your user goes to your website, they don't have to download any library. Everything is vanilla JavaScript. And that is really, really cool. This is the opposite of React. When you work on React and you finish your website and your user goes to your website, they have to download the React library so your website can work. With a React, your website doesn't work. On Svelte, when you compile everything, everything becomes vanilla JS. And that's awesome because that means that there is no need for a library. That's, that's great. And I really like that concept. And I guess that's why Svelte is so high up on the list of people that want to learn it. Now, if we look at the satisfaction, I think the satisfaction is there. Vue.js, Svelte, and React are the kings. Nobody likes Angular and Ember.js. Satisfaction is very low. Interest, I think everybody's interested in Svelte. 
many, many people want to learn Svelte. And I guess the interest for Vue and React is going down because they are not new anymore. And that makes sense. There is nothing bad with it. They are, they are not fun anymore. They are boring. Svelte is a new kit. And that's why everybody is looking at it. And awareness, I guess everybody knows about React, Angular, Vue. Everybody knows. So that's it. Okay. Data layer. On data layer, I think Redux still, look at that, 47%, Redux still king of uh, data management, state management, but Apollo is catching up into what it means like many people want to learn Apollo. And here we have GraphQL, which basically it doesn't really compete with Apollo. I think GraphQL is Apollo. They're like the same thing because you do GraphQL with Apollo. But anyways, the popularity and the interest of people on GraphQL is really, really big. That means that GraphQL is going to keep growing and I predict that Redux is going to keep falling or that 20% of people of Redux that have used it but don't want to use it again is going to grow and the people that have used Apollo and want to use it again is going to grow as well. If you look at satisfaction, whenever you try GraphQL, you're satisfied 95% of the time. Same with Apollo and not so much with Redux, Mobix and Relay. But also interest wise, the interest for GraphQL and Apollo exploded and stayed high and also awareness. I mean, awareness, GraphQL is as high as Redux and that's a really good thing. And Apollo is not that high, but I mean, you have to acknowledge Redux is there, 97%. That means it's not a bad library, it's just sometimes used for the wrong purposes. Backend frameworks, Express is the winner. 71% of people use Express and want to keep using Express. And that's me, one of them. Express just became the default for when you want to do anything backend on Node.js. That's just the fact. It's just the default. 71% proves it. Uh, on this category, there is Next.js and Gatsby, but they are not really backend frameworks. They are more like React frameworks. So that's why I put the monkey there. But the interesting part is that 43% of people want to learn Next.js and 35% of people want to learn Gatsby. That's really, really cool because I was thinking of making a course on Next.js and it's really cool to see how many people are interested on it. Um, the rest, Koa, Meteor, Sales, Feathers is just whatever. Express, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, if we look at satisfaction, satisfaction, people tried Express and they stay on Express. And the same with Next, people try Next and they stay in Next. Also, Gatsby Gats and Nooks, they're very new, so we don't know yet. Uh, interest, Express, I guess Express is not that fun. Express is boring, everybody knows Express has been around for ages, so interest what is, is falling and many people are interested in Next.js. The important part is to look at Meteor. Meteor was, yeah, keep falling. And awareness, I guess everybody is aware of Express. The awareness for Next and Gatsby is growing and the awareness for Koa, Sales and Feathers is just going down. All right, now let's look at the last part, which is mobile desktop. Mobile desktop, Electron and React Native are the winners in usage and on people that are interested in learning them. This is really cool. I think this happens because JavaScript developers, it's very interesting to know that we can do a Mac OS software or we can build a desktop application for Windows or we can make an Android application or an, Android, or an iOS application. So that's why I think these things are so high up. But also, uh, React Native has many people that have heard of it but don't want to use it, which is interesting. And also React Native has a considerable amount of people that have used it and don't want to use it again. Interesting. Satisfaction wise, Electron is high up with React Native. The same thing with interest and awareness. I guess people are more aware of React Native than with Electron. Also, if you look at the other ones, Flutter and Native Script are going up, but especially Flutter. Flutter is, I think we're going to see more of Flutter on the next year's survey because it's, uh, I think it's a really good tool and it's going to compete with React Native a lot. All right, now let's look at opinions. And these are like statements that JavaScript developers make and they see if they agree or disagree. And this one, for example, JavaScript is moving on the right direction. Strongly agree was really high on 2018 and now it became 20%. So that means that people don't really strongly agree anymore, becoming a little bit more negative now. Building JavaScript apps is overly complex right now. 
And this is good. The fact that this is going down is good because that means that building JavaScript apps is not that complex. And I think this is because, like I said, we have winners on the categories like React, Vue, Express, and this just makes it easy for developers because things don't change that often. This one, I enjoy building JavaScript applications. And like I said, 2018 was a very positive year because very people strongly agree. But now people agree, not strongly agree anymore. And this one is my favorite one, which is the JavaScript ecosystem is changing too fast. And this is a good thing because usually many JavaScript developers complained about the JavaScript changes too fast. And now that, like I said, we have winners on categories like TypeScript, React, Vue, and Express, these things are not going to change as quickly. So we are not going to feel so exhausted that we have to learn and keep learning things. All right, that's it for this video. I hope that you like the statistics and the graphs and all that. Let me know what you think on the video. Tell me how do you feel about that statement? Do you enjoy building JavaScript applications? Strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, or strongly disagree? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to be happy. Don't forget to eat kimchi. And as always, kamsamnida and sarangheo very, very much. Bye-bye.